Hi, so I get a lot of questions about what split tones are uh, when I work with composers and students. And I just want to take a quick second to do a short little video as an introduction or primer into what the technique is. So we're going to split this into a few different parts. One's going to be what split tones are with a demonstration of the partial series. The second part is going to be how to play them. And the third part is going to be a compendium of the sounds it's on both tenor trombone and alto trombone. And there'll be a little brief fourth part where I'll show you a little bit about what mutes do to the split tone sound. So for our first part, what are split tones? To understand split tones, we have to understand the partial series. Partial series is how notes stack on brass. When you play all the notes in one position or with no valves if you're uh, non trombone Those are all examples of partials that are controlled with our lips. Now, if you're a brass player, you're already pretty familiar with this. So, if you're a composer, though, it can be helpful to have a chart or something like that that details how it goes. Just useful. Uh, split tones are a technique of buzzing two adjacent partials at the same time with the upper lip and the lower lip. So if I take two partials, technique of split tone is playing those simultaneously. Which is kind of a cool sound. Now we can take those sounds and we can do them on any two adjacent partials, but the sounds will be different and more or less pure depending on the higher and lower you go. As you'll see in the compendium section, it can really change a lot based off of what register you're writing in. Uh, for our second part is quickly how to work on split tones and how to practice them. I learned this technique from the great um, the great trombonist Mike Svoboda based in Basel, Switzerland. I uh, went and audited a class of his at Darmstadt a bunch of years ago and I managed to catch his ear and ask him how he did split tones. It took me a few years to, to really get at what he was saying and to learn it. So it can take time. Some people I know get split tones in like a week. From me to where I am now it took maybe about seven years. Your results may vary, probably won't take as long as me. So the way that Mike taught me to play split tones is to establish a medium register note, in which case we're going with F3 or the F on the fourth line up in bass clef. And that's the note that we want to build our split tone off of. Uh, what I was taught was to move my jaw up and in, almost like a bulldog, like an underbite slowly while playing and at a certain point the split tone will kind of catch underneath and what we want to focus on is keeping the tone of the upper note as steady as possible so we want to really keep in mind and we want to gently move our jaw up and in until it kind of starts to catch now it can be a really subtle motion so i definitely encourage really trying to keep that f steady and just gently ever so slightly moving up and in do this exercise when I come back out of the split tone I like to keep the ideal tone quality of um, a classic orchestral training in mind I find that it's really good to be able to go back and forth between techniques without sacrificing one sound for the other so whenever I do my split tone practice I try to start and end with the most orchestral classical sound I can uh...
other good thing to know is that this is a great diagnostic tool for beginning trombonists. When beginning trombonists get that double buzz, you can tell them what they're doing and you can tell them how to get out of it. You can tell them that their jaw is too tight and they need to open up a little bit to get rid of the double buzz. You can see my jaw move a little bit more overtly there. After a while of getting used to the split tone, you can start just by attacking notes on it. It's kind of a fun technique to work on. And then you can move that up and down registers once you're comfortable. So for part three, I'm going to do a really quick compendium of sounds. I'm going to tell you what the two notes are and then move chromatically out in like each partial series so you get to hear a bit of what each sound might sound like. Our first split tone is the one I've been doing, which is F3 and B flat 2. And I'm going to move that out in each of the seventh positions, lowering it a half step each time until I'm at, uh, what is it, B2 and E2. that the further I get out on the slide, the loss of compression means it can be sometimes a little harder to hold steady. So there's also split tones that you can use on the F trigger in the same partial series. So I can start on F3 and it's going to sound F3 and C3 and it's going to go down six positions. As I go further, because the F trigger messes up the tuning due to the fact that slides are added to the back of the horn but not also the front the tuning gets a little weird so let's just listen through that i'm going to start fc F, f3 c3 and go down are really useful for Zanakis's Karen, for example. He writes some split tones that are only achievable through use of the F trigger. Uh, the F trigger also has a lower range where you can start on C3 and F2 and move down again in six positions because of the compromised F attachment. As it gets lower and lower in that range, I personally have a hard time getting a lot of projection out of them. They're still pretty quiet, something I've been working on for some time. Maybe I'll do a video update in a year and they'll be much louder, but who knows. There's also split tones available on the octave between the pedal tone and the first partial. They're also really quiet and hard for me personally to hold steady, but let me just show you what they might sound like. They don't sound great. Every once in a while they lock in and they sound like a slightly compromised octave. Um, two more partials to show you that are really useful. One is the um, 3 over 2, the like B flat 3 over F3, the next partial up. And I'm going to do that in all seven positions going from B flat 3, F3 down to um, E3, B2. <laughs> And 
you can also do those notes with the trigger and they sound different. It goes from like A down to something. A down to E in thirds. Also useful to know because a few of those notes are also in Xenakis's Karen. For instance, there's an F D flat in the staff that you can only do in like trigger seven. So just a really useful trick to know for the trombonists out there. There's also a five four split tone one higher, which kind of sounds still pretty good. For split tones that get higher than that, it starts to turn in kind of like an overpressure multiphonic or a dirtier version of the sound rather than like the dyad feel that you get in the middle low register. I'll play some of the higher partials. Here's a D and an F. Um, here's an F and the lowered A flat above that. an A flat and a B flat. Again, these are harder to keep stable. For more sounds that exist in that kind of strata, I'd encourage looking at my little primer video on overpressure multiphonics. Uh, as I promised, there's also a bunch of really cool sounds available on alto trombone. I know uh, Ben Marks from the Elysian Ensemble is really good at these things. He, um, I first ran into in the piece that was written for him called, uh, oh, I think it's called Aurora for, um, I might be wrong on that, I hope not, sorry Ben if I am, for quarter tone flugel and alto trombone. This is an alto trombone, it's pitched in E flat, maybe I should do another primer video on that one time. I'm quickly just going to play the 2-1 um, and 3-2 split tones for you. So what we're going to start off is B flat 3, E flat 3, going down in half steps in all seven positions. So E flat four, B flat three, going down in half steps. So yeah, that's alto trombone. Has some really cool split tones available. There's a whole world out there to really explore on alto and then bass with the two triggers and euphonium with four valves or four valves compensating. Uh, yeah, also have a lot of wealth of operations that this video would just be way too long if I went through all those two. Uh, one last thing I'd like to leave you with. You can do really cool things with split tones and mutes. So like a Harmon mute. If I take the original split tone that I did, the F, B flat, F3, B flat 2. You can get some really cool stuff happening. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, you can only really use the trigger if you stay in first position and your trombonist is really good at using their thumb for things.
Which can actually be pretty cool. But that's just a little trick that only works in that position. And finally, we have our plunger meat, which I find that mutes that can cover and uncover have the most interesting results when working with split tones and other extended techniques. Your mileage may vary, other trombonists may be good at them in different ways. This is just what I find I like. So here's the same uh, FB flat. <laughs> the little trigger trick. Thank you so much for watching. If you have more questions or want to see more content about split tones, which who knows, maybe some of you out there really do. Please let me know and yeah, thanks for your time.